Hi everyone and welcome to part 3 of my uh, Falklands War tribute build to the Blues and Royals Scorpion using AFV Club's 135th scale kit and a few extra bits added on here and there. Now in this uh, part we're going to be looking at completing the turret so if that's something you're interested in then just grab yourself a cup of coffee take a seat and let's do some modelling. So first off, um, there was quite a lack of um, weld detail on this kit. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. Here, as you can see, I'm just using the end of an old pair of uh, tweezers and just scouring the, the edge. And that gives you a nice effect um, once painted up. And that was done on the uh, bottom of the turret ring all the way around. Now, another way that you can do it um, is to actually scribe out um, some channels and here are a couple of scribes that I have this is the smaller one and this is the uh, two mil one and also you can use little chisels as well now you have to be very careful because you don't want to uh, slip and not only cut your finger but obviously to uh, scrape the rest of the kit so once that's done it's just a matter of uh, getting a bit of uh, solder wire either three or four mil depending on the uh, thickness of the uh, weld seam you're depicting and glue that into place with uh, some CA glue and then go around and put on the uh, solder pattern. There is a how to do uh, on my YouTube channel if you want some more details. And then uh, there was a missing bead along the top which came out really well and uh, after that I was very pleased with the extra detail of the weld seams all the way around the turret. Now try and avoid uh, losing pieces to the carpet monster what you can do is actually stick them to the model in the first place scrape off the seam lines and then get your sanding stick and sand those flat as well so they go completely and again this time for the weld uh, seam detail just a matter of using the end of a craft knife and going around and then once that's done that will create this particular look here now the D10 uh, connection cover was a little bit too small um, on the kit so I scratch built a large one uh, just using a bit of um, styrene tubing, a styrene disc on top and then just wrapping a bit of uh, wire around the, 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 the uh, centre and that uh, came out a lot better. Now the hinges on the uh, side boxes um, don't quite look like hinges to me so they were all scraped off and then it was just a matter of putting a, a 0.5 piece of styrene rod on as a replacement and then getting the craft knife and making little notches uh, to create the um, more subtle hinge effect as you can see here and as I run my finger across it I can actually feel the extra texture there so I'm looking forward to seeing how those get painted up now there is no um, extinguisher on the Falklands one on the bottom side there so all of those fixings were filled in the box on the back uh, fitted beautifully um, obviously the detailing is wonderful so that was all scraped off and that will be replaced with PE detailing later. And this is some of the PE handles, very small and fiddly. But they gave you a few extra just in case you lose any. Now the actual um, box on top of the uh, turret for the lookout uh, wasn't the best I'm afraid. So you really do need to fill and glue this as much as possible. And then get your sanding stick and sand this all flat because it is one block, it's not made up of two. Now as far as the grenade launchers go, I used the PE uh, set uh, for the actual bracket, remembering to put the uh, rivets uh, on as well. And then they're fixed in place um, and the uh, top of the uh, grenade launcher was made out of PE as well. And I used the kit PE grenades themselves, but as you can see it's very tight indeed. And as we'll see later, I redid all of this because I just wasn't happy with the size of them. Now also on the turret there's a small fiddly piece there from the kit so be careful with that but they don't supply you the machine gun so that was made out of just a little off cut of styrene rod and drilled out for the hollowness of it. Now as far as the actual barrel goes um, I was tempted to, to cut this piece off and put the metal barrel in um, but it was too much like hard work um, so I, I stuck with the resin piece and I just added some missing detailing which was the um, Jubilee kit at both ends and some of the strapping and the little screw there as well so really pleased with how that turned out 
now I'll just show you now how it all fixes in but um, for the rest of the um, detailing on the turret I did take it back out again because I was worried about it getting snapped off but it'll certainly look the part once it's done so some extra detailing was done uh, with the uh, coaxial cables um, and the little uh, extension there and that was done on both sides using a uh, 3mm solder wire Uh, this port here there's a little um, P bracket on top some of the photos do show uh, a bracket going all the way across there for the commander to put his maps books etc on top of I decided not to add that if you want to put a windscreen wiper just remember to cut it out along the bottom here because that's where it's molded into place there is a windscreen wiper on this side for effect as well The hatches were going to be put on in the closed position because I didn't want to do any interior detailing and some little extra screw head was put here on the side and that little uh, bracket was moved back a bit and the gap filled in just to make it a little bit more realistic now these should have been coils but it was just too much like hard work to replace those so I just uh, uh, did some extra detailing with the craft knife to give the impression now as you can see there's a deliberate mistake with these ports um, unfortunately I put that one in the wrong way probably about a week before this video so that was now glued in solid but not to worry what you can do is get some uh, debonder don't worry about it saying super glue um, it can work on all types of glue and what we can do is just put that around the edge there and underneath and just leave it for a minute or two just to soak in and then we can uh, prise that one out so finally just giving it a little bit of <coughs> extra help with the cocktail stick getting into all the crevices and creases in there and then very gently because it will come out just like taking out a tooth really just prise it open gently and there we go out it comes and then it's just a matter of leaving it to dry and then clean it all out and then sticking it back in the right way around here was the hatch a little uh, very small PE um, clasp put on there as you can see this is probably the smallest bit of PE in the kit so be careful you don't lose this one to the carpet monster and there was some other small PE additions and also some little um, styrene discs added just to improve the detailing on the back of the turret the fire extinguisher that was discarded with completely uh, there was a lovely PE bracket that I used and then I just made a, a fire extinguisher out of a bit of styrene rod and that uh, really looked the part once that was done now as far as those grenade launchers go I wasn't happy uh, with the size of, of the uh, mount so I decided to make my own so just made a sandwich of uh, little strips of uh, styrene put it all together drew out the size of the original one and then once that had all dried it was a matter of just cutting it around sanding it all back and as you can see it's a lot smaller as far as width goes the actual depth of it was fine it was just the width um, closed in those grenades a little bit tighter as well and as far as I was concerned I thought that looked a lot better indeed a lot more realistic and as you can see there's quite a difference and that turret could go up and down no problems at all now so I was very pleased with how that all turned out so as we just go back around again uh, there we have the handles the one on the left is missing because there's going to be a, a, a bedroll put on there on the sides you can either put the fire extinguisher or you can in fact uh, put uh, the fuel can if you want uh, the fuel cans going on this side but there are a couple um, if needed if you want to put them on both sides so just going around uh, there's the ca uh, cable cover that's been put on the little bracket there I replaced because the PE wasn't fantastic and that will allow you to put the cable reel I've just made a, a little handle in there and that will drop in there and that will look the way it does on the reference photos and there 
now again we have all of the detailing of the grenade launchers you can just see some little weld seams that I've added on the side a bit more attention to detail there and the brackets and the banding on the turret on the gun has come out well there's the fire extinguisher that I made that looks all nice and neat now looking forward to getting that one painted up and as you can see on top the ports now been moved around there was a little triangular plate that was missing from the kit so that's been added on and the hatches have been put together as well and there's some more of that uh, mad detailing at the back with the PE so a very busy turret but really pleased with how that's all turned out and here are some more close-ups for you now the extras that are going to be going on these are the ropes really pleased with these ropes I love them um, be aware though they are made of cotton um, so they will fray so make sure you treat them before you start painting them the little um, uh, tow cable eyes I suppose you call them you can put them on the front on the sides I actually put my one on on the back as per reference photos uh, the ammo box and the grenade boxes again there's loads of configurations on how uh, you can put them so it's entirely up to you the most common one is to actually have the three running along the uh, right hand side so that's probably where I'm going to be putting mine not quite decided yet on that and again with the other grenade boxes um, again seen all over the uh, all over the tank so again look at your reference photos and then decide yourself where you want to put those Uh, there are a couple of spare wheels um, they were put on the back primarily on the scimitars and I haven't actually got a reference photo of them being on the scorpion so I'll probably be leaving those off and then we have the spare sprocket uh, which I'll be adding on, on the front there somewhere as well so lots of options uh, but the main thing we want to do is to add some kit bags on there so we'll be using some milliput now i have done a, a tutorial i think it was on the uh, stug uh, video so if you want some more detail on how to do sculpting but basically uh, what we need to do is get your tools together have uh, a glass base and here we're going to be using the yellow gray milliput there are other types of milliput that you want to use i just like this one because it's nice and soft and easy for sculpting and it's just a matter of uh, adding the two parts together and you do have a couple of hours or so before it goes hard so plenty of time to do your sculpting rolling pin to roll it out with uh, some talcum powder to stop it sticking to the glass then you have your sculpting tools to make all the creases and folds on this one we're going to be using Arbor's buckles and straps PE set obviously your craft knife and then as far as um, getting some ideas copying whatever you want to call it just dig some resin parts out of your spares box and that give you some ideas of how you, you can make your kit look now an interesting photo I discovered um, showed a um, spare track holder on the side so I replicated that using a bit of styrene um, sheet and some pewter handles with a couple of meng nuts on and then uh, you just basically using the spares from from the tracks uh, set that I had I made up uh, four links and that sat on there quite nicely so what that was going to now be was my basis of where I was going to be adding on top of all of my kit so first of all is need to make the the, the strips uh, sorry the straps for the kit and as you can see this is a PE bending tool and it's quite easy then to, to cut through uh, the milliput to make the straps and then just wrap them around um, the ports and here we have uh, one of the kit bags with a couple of straps on the front as well uh, using the arbor buckles and then just using your reference photos just build it up one by one to create the uh, much of a natural look as you possibly can so this is a larger kit bag going on then we have the uh, 58 webbing on top of that again with all of the buckles and the straps and then finally an, a, another part kit bag part of the webbing on the side there so I was happy with that side on the other side I just did a little canvas sheet uh, we'll put a bit of camo uh, patterning on that um, 
and there's another little bit on the turret there now the bed rolls on the side um, they were great fun I enjoyed doing those uh, they'll look the part there's a couple more that will go on to the back as well and as the camera shot comes around at the very back and on the turret bin you'll see another large kit bag that, that was put on there as well so this gives you an idea of where the ropes are going to go uh, where all the um, ammo boxes etc are going to be positioned um, so that just leaves me to say thanks very much indeed for looking in today uh, it's a really enjoyable project i'm now looking forward to getting some paint on it so i'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you ever so much for all of my subscribers thank you for your continued support of my work and happy modeling <laughs>